Good morning and welcome back to class. Welcome back to Bible Doctrine number three. Bible Doctrine number three. Today we're going to get into lesson number two. We are going to talk about the name of Jesus. We're going to talk about the name above every other name, the name in whom all power is given. We're going to talk about that great precious name, Jesus. Amen. In our first class of of the third term of our Bible Doctrine 3. We talked about, covered the titles of Jesus. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about the names of Jesus. Now, if you guys will remember it, this really set the foundation for the class that we're in now. We begin to talk about the difference in a name and a title. A title is an attribute of a person, but the name is that the person themselves. And so we're going to talk about that a little more. We'll get into that a little bit in this kind of part two, if you want to call it that, lesson of this, uh, the name of Jesus. Very powerful things in this. There is a part of this lesson where we get to talking about the name of Jesus being greater. Uh, there is some good preaching material inside of this. Uh, if you're looking for something to preach, you can just preach about the name of Jesus being greater. It's uh, the greatest name. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. But it's so good to be back in class. I do appreciate each and every one of you. I believe in you guys. I'm so thankful for how God is using you and all of the great things that God is doing. It's great. This is a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be living for God. It's a great day to be at Acts Bible School. And I want to say today how much I do appreciate all of your sacrifice, all your commitment to not only the things of God, but also to Acts Bible School. I believe in Acts. I believe in what God is doing for the school. And I believe in our instructors. I believe that God has ordained us all together for such a time as this. I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe in accidents. I believe that God has positioned every one of us. That's why that the Bible says the steps of a good man or steps of a righteous man, they are ordered of the Lord. So your steps are ordered here. My steps are ordered here. Every one of the staff, your steps were ordered of the Lord. And so God is helping us and has uniquely positioned each and every one of us for this exact time. As you guys know, the Bible even said that it was the right time. It was the timing of the Lord when that God manifests himself in the flesh, born of a virgin. That was an exact time. It was the right political time. It was the right religious time. It was the right hunger time. It was all fulfilling all the right time. And so I believe just as detailed as the Lord was with the timing of his coming, he is also very detailed with the timing of his calling, the timing of revival, and the timing of his second coming. And God has positioned us, you and I, in the right place at the right time, right here at Acts Bible School, so that we can be equipped for the things of God. You are not here by accident. And I know that it is a sacrifice uh, for you to be here. I know that it is a sacrifice for your sponsors and your family to come together and help with all of these things. But I want you to know God is going to bless each of your sponsors. God's going to bless you in a mighty way because all of these things have come to the right place at the right time. You are exactly where God wants you to be. You're doing exactly what God wants you to do. And I'm thankful for that. I feel that for my own self. I feel that God has positioned us, uniquely positioned and appointed us for such a time as this. We see that all the way through the New Testament. We see it into uh, or the Old Testament and the New Testament. We saw it with Esther. It was for such a time as this. And I cannot help but believe that God has also done that for us. He's done that for you and I. He's positioned us 
Here, there are things that he is building into your life that you have been carried here for this moment. And as God begins to build not only ministry in you, but begins to build greater godly character inside of you, all of a sudden, all of the pieces come together and you will step out into ministry in a way that will be anointed, it'll be powerful, and it will be sustained. I don't want to be... Um, when I was in Bible school, I, 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 I heard someone talk about how that uh, some people would be shooting stars. And, uh, and, and a shooting star is very beautiful. It burns very bright. It, it looks great. Um, matter of fact, on uh, not very many weeks ago, I was out driving, and while driving, I saw a shooting star go across the sky over to the right-hand side of, of me and just shot across. It's very beautiful. And uh, when you see a, a shooting star or what we call a falling star, it's really just the light burning out of a star. The gas is going out. It's a star dying, uh, but it's very beautiful. But that light that you see is a light that in fact, uh, started a very a long time before, and it traveled, and as it traveled, then finally it reached to our eyes where we could see it. But when we talk about a shooting star, we talk about something that's very bright, something that is very beautiful, something that is great to look at, but something that does burn out. Now, I don't want to burn out. I don't want to go away. And so when I was in Bible school, they taught us to be firmly built on Bible doctrine because it's Bible doctrine that's going to keep us from burning out like the shooting star. The shooting star rises fast and it looks great, but then it goes away and it's never to be seen again, never to be heard from again. I don't want that for my ministry. I certainly don't want that for your ministry. I don't want you to burn bright really fast and then go away. But I want you to be standing firm on the foundations of God so that when you step into even more of a full-time role of ministry, even outside of Bible school, when you step into leading the youth group or when you step into to pioneering the church, when you step into uh, working with a pastor, when you step into the assistant role or missionary or evangelist, or whatever God has called you to, leading that choir, that, that, that Sunday school department, whatever it is, God has called you uh, to do that in a way that you will endure until he comes again. Uh, and we don't want to fall away from him. We want to grow closer to him. And so doctrine, Bible doctrine sustains us. Our love for God and standing on the word of God will position us so that we can do the great works of God and stand the test of time. We don't just do it for a little while and burn away like the shooting star, but we stand upon the word of God. We stand upon the truth of the word of God and we stand on that sure foundation. Doctrine helps disciple us to be strong in our foundation. And I know you are the same as me. You want to be productive. You want to live for God. You don't want to fall away. You don't want to just do this for a little while. You want to be consumed by the things of God, to do the work of God, to be consistent and stand, to endure. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Bible doctrine gives us the knowledge the strength, and the heart to endure no matter what times of difficulty that we may go through. And so we're going to get into Bible Doctrine 3. We are in Bible Doctrine 3, lesson number 2, the name of Jesus, and that is going to be on page number 11 in your notes. Page number 11, Bible Doctrine 2. Title of our lesson today is, or Bible Doctrine 3, lesson 2. The title of our lesson today is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Lord, as we come before you right now, we are asking that you would reach down into our class today, that you would give us the strength, you would give us the wisdom, that we would be able to teach this in a way that would open our eyes, open our hearts, God, to you. We need to be anointed, cleanse our hearts, Lord. Cannot do this without you. Need your help in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. God's name was a secret in the Old Testament. Now, in our first two references, I want to be very clear with this because the writer said in Judges 13, 17, and Manoah said, 
unto the angel of the Lord, what is thy name? And then the second reference in Genesis 32 and verse 29, and Jacob asked, tell me thy name. Now I circled these and I left a little note by these first two verses because I do uh, consider them to be different than the following three verses. We are talking about the name of Jesus and the first two verses, and I understand the idea of theophanies where they believe in uh, Christ manifestations in the Old Testament or God manifestations in the Old Testament. We do not believe that Jesus manifests himself in, uh, the, under the law. We do not believe that. We believe that Jesus' manifestation was when he was born of a virgin. And so uh, these first two references here... I, as the instructor, stand of the opinion that these two verses are talking about angels and not the name of the Lord. And so the reason I say that is because I believe that with textual criticism, we should reveal or we should interpret text as it reveals itself. We should not, uh, I know it's not open to private interpretation, but where the text is clear, we should remain clear of our understanding of the text. Manoah said in Judges, uh, he said unto the angel of the Lord, uh, what is thy name? Now I understand that the writer of the lesson is using this to, to, to talk about the name of Jesus, but I believe that this was an angel that Manoah was talking about. And then uh, again in Jacob, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter number 32 that he wrestled with an angel of the Lord. It does not uh, say that he wrestled with Jesus, because we know that Jesus is the only begotten. He was born of a virgin. And so the first two, I just circled them and I, I put a side note out that said the first two uh, scriptures do not work as textual examples. Uh, they are clearly referring to angels. However, Exodus chapter number three and verse number 13, they shall say to me, what is thy name? That is the Lord speaking, Proverbs 30 and four. What is his name and what is his son's name? Isaiah 52 and six, therefore my people shall know my name, the name of Jesus. The reason that we see such a consistent inquiry regarding or constant uh, inquiry regarding the name of deity in the Old Testament is that his name was withheld from them uh, to be revealed in this dispensation. The real name is revealed in the New Testament. Our scripture reference for this is Matthew 1 21, thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Did you catch that? Matthew 1 21 reveals the name. The Old Testament revealed his attributes, but the New Testament not only reveals his attributes, but also reveals his name. Matthew 1 21, it is revealed, thou shalt call his name Jesus. Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Here we find his real name, which has been revealed to us as Jesus. Jesus is the one name of our God and reveals him as Savior. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is not the name of deity. There are many titles of our Lord God as we discussed in our previous lesson, all of which depict offices and characteristics of God. Among them are the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In like manner, a man is body, soul, and spirit. But this is not the man's name. These are merely titles or attributes of the man. We would go to a bank and we would write a check. Now, I know in uh, the time that we're filming this in 2019, at least in the United States of America, only a small percentage, about 10% of the country, is still writing checks to pay bills. Uh, but uh, in, in fact, if you wrote a check, when I get ready to pay my rent, I still write a check to my landlord for the lot rent where uh, my trailer sets. And so when I get ready to write the check, I write the check out to the name of the business, to uh, the landlord. I don't write it out and I don't sign it. 
uh, father, even though I'm a father. I don't sign it son, even though I'm a son. I don't sign it uh, uh, Holy Ghost, even though I do have the Holy Ghost. I certainly don't sign my checks by the name, the title Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And I um, am a preacher. I'm an evangelist, but I don't sign that as my name because those are just titles of me. It's an attribute of me. But when I write the check and we get ready to pay the rent for the space that we uh, park our trailer in, I write that to the name of the company and to make it a valid check. It is then written and signed by uh, my name. I put Trent Gillum in that signature so that when the bank looks at it, they, they, they don't know if I'm a father or a son. They don't know that I'm a preacher, but they know my name and my name matches the contract at the bank or the account at the bank. And because of that, the check then is good. If I just sign a uh, father, then it doesn't match uh, the account. It doesn't match the name on the account. And because of that, then it would make the check not valid. And so uh, the writer of the lesson tells us and gives us the same example uh, when it comes to the name of Jesus. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is not the name of deity, but Jesus is the name of deity. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is just titles of or attributes of Jesus. His name is Jesus. Jesus. The Bible tells us that Jesus came in his Father's name. John 5, 43 says, I am come in my Father's name. John 10, 25, the works that I do in my Father's name. I do them in my Father's name. John 17, 26, I have declared unto them thy name. Acts 9 and 5, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. Acts 9, 17, the Lord, even Jesus, hath sent me. Acts 7, 59, Stephen calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus. Just more proof that the name of God is Jesus. Hebrews 4 and 8, for, it, for if Jesus had given them rest, this verse is referring to Almighty God and the Israelites. I, Jesus, according to Revelation 22 and 16, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you. So Jesus is the name. Many of the scriptures that we just referenced above, John 5, 43, John 10, 25, John 17, 26, Acts 9 and 5, uh, these scriptures reference clearly the fact that the name of the Father is Jesus. The scriptural evidence is conclusive in showing that the Father's name is Jesus. That's right. Jesus is the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. And for our scriptural reference for this section on page number 12, we're going to use Matthew 28 and verse 19. The Bible says in Matthew 28, 19, baptizing them in the name. Now, I want you to notice the spelling of this in the King James and the English is N-A-M-E. It is in the name of Jesus. It is not plural. Uh, it is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The name is not plural. N-A-M-E is singular. And so we are looking for a name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And we should note carefully that the name, that it's name, not names with an S. It is N-A-M-E, not N-A-M-E-S. The word is in the singular. And what is the name? The only way to find out is to search the scriptures and find it in the name the apostles baptized. So what name did the apostles baptize in? They were commanded to do it in the name of the Father, uh, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So what name did the apostles baptize in? They can be, can, can, we can look at scripture to find out what they baptized in. Remember, it's very important that we understand that scripture will not contradict itself. And so uh, we, they were told to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost. 
Now, when we find them baptizing, what do we find them using? Do we find them uh, using the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Or do we find them being obedient to the Word of God, uh, to Matthew 28, 19? And so I'm going to go ahead and answer this for you. We find them being obedient to Matthew 28, 19 by doing what the Lord commanded them to do because they understood that a title, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, is not the name. They knew the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is Jesus. And because of this, they followed the teachings of Peter that the Lord moved on him. And when he commanded them in Acts 2 and verse 38 to be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus. And so it is that they were not commanded to baptize in the titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or any of the many titles, some 1,100 or so that we referenced in part of them in our previous lesson. They were commanded to baptize in the name. That is why we do not baptize people calling on the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but we baptize them in the name of Jesus. And with that thought in mind, Scripture cannot contradict itself. And so when you look at the name, the, 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 the name and then you see Father, Son, Holy Ghost, if name and titles are different, then we must understand that, that we are to follow Scripture and baptize in the name of Jesus and not his attributes and not his titles. And since Scripture will not contradict itself, then we need to find out what the apostles did. Acts 2 and 38, baptizing, this was at Jerusalem, baptizing them in the name of Jesus. And then Acts 8 and 12, at Samaria, they were preaching in the name of Jesus, and they were baptizing in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then at Caesarea, they baptized in the name of the Lord. And that references Acts 10 and verse number 48. And then at Ephesus, the Bible tells us in Acts 19, uh, verses 1 through 6, that here they were rebaptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Again, this is scriptural evidence. The scriptural evidence is conclusive, showing that the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost is Jesus. The name of the titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, is revealed to be Jesus. And we know this because since we laid the foundation with the fact that Scripture will not and cannot contradict itself, then the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, if Scripture, uh, if it was intended to be baptized in the titles, then, then the apostles were wrong because they didn't baptize in the titles. They baptized in the name. But we know that the apostles were were not wrong. We know that the scripture is not contradicting itself for it declares for us to baptize in the name of and not in the title of. And we know that the revealed name of the Father is Jesus. We know that the revealed name of the Son is Jesus. And we know that the revealed name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Page number 13, understanding Matthew 28 and 19 is essential to understanding our lesson on the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Matthew 28, 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The name is singular. Father is title. Son is title. Holy Ghost is title. Now I'm going to go over that again. Name is singular, Father is title, Son is title, and Holy Ghost is title. Jesus did not tell his disciples to baptize repeating the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He told them to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are not names, but titles uh, pointing to one person who has one name. And that one person that has one name is Jesus. Shall we obey the command of Jesus or just merely repeat his words? It should be noted that those who have been baptized in the titles have not been baptized scripturally because they were not baptized in the name. 
It's, it's great for us to know the titles of Jesus. It's great for us to know the attributes of Jesus. But it is absolutely essential that we are baptized according to Scripture, which was not in the attributes or the titles, but was in the name of Jesus. So G, the name of Jesus is above every other name name. And I love this. Underneath it, I wrote with my, my, my pencil, I wrote, uh, his name is greater and put an exclamation mark. And this is so much of this will preach because uh, it, it's powerful. And Philippians 2 and 9 said, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him in giving him a name, which is above every name. Jesus is the name of deity, the one supreme God. Therefore, his name is above the names of the greatest king who has ever uh, reigned. His name is uh, uh, greater than the greatest of general who has ever won a war or a battle. His name is the greatest among any scientist. His name is greater than any inventor. The name of Jesus is greater than any architect. The name of Jesus is greater than the greatest of artists. The name of Jesus is greater than the greatest name of any musician. The name of Jesus is greater than the greatest name of any poet. The name of Jesus is greater than the name of any lawyer. The name of Jesus is greater than the name of the greatest physician or the greatest name of any preacher. The name of Jesus is greater. And I feel the touch of the Holy Ghost on me right now because I'm telling you today that when you understand the authority of the name of Jesus, there'll be no question about baptismal formulas because we'll know the power is not in a title, but it's in the name. There is a name that has been revealed. And I am thankful today to know that we're standing before uh, this class knowing the name. We are uh, the people of the name of Jesus. We have been covered by his name, bought with his blood, purchased uh, by his life-giving sacrifice. And I am thankful that I know the name of Jesus. When I speak the name of Jesus, the devil trembles. When I speak the name of Jesus, everything comes under authority and under subjection of the name of Jesus. There is no greater name. There is no poet, no lawyer, no great inventor, no scientist, no doctor that will ever carry the name. There is no, uh, there is no sports figure that will ever have a greater name than the name of Jesus. And I love the fact that Jesus, when we call on his name, he moves. When we call on his name, he draws close. When we mention his name, he's just as close as the mentioning of his name. There's something very powerful about the name of Jesus. And this section right here will preach. And if you need a sermon, uh, you can use Philippians 2 and 9, and you can just preach his name is greater and you could talk about sickness and you could say Jesus is greater you could talk about fear and you could say Jesus is greater his name is greater than any other name in heaven uh, above upon earth or in hell beneath his name is greater than that of any other person in history at the present time or in ages to come or in the past. There is absolutely no limitation. I love this. I, 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 I wrote underneath that there is absolutely no limitation to the degree that we may develop this truth. His name is greater than pain. His name is greater than sickness. His name is greater than fear. His name is greater than anxiety. His name is greater than worry. His name is greater greater than depression. It's the name of Jesus. And when we speak the name of Jesus, there is an authority that comes. That means if his name is greater than anything that I'm dealing with in my life, anything that I'm struggling with, when I begin to pray the name, when I begin to speak the name, everything is under his authority. His authority is greater. And so no matter how strong the attack of the enemy is, in my life and against me, I know that the name of Jesus is greater than that. You name what you will, name cancer, name heart disease, name any sickness, and I will tell you right now, the name of Jesus is greater than all of those things. That's why Jesus' name is greater than death. That's why we know that, that 
he can, uh, his, he's greater than blindness. He's greater than deafness. He's greater than all of these things. That's why by his authority, when we pray, when we lay hands on the sick and we pray in the name of Jesus, they recover. Why? Because his name is greater. And I am thankful that we know the name of Jesus. There are people in this world that have never heard his name. There are people, there are dialects, there are cultures that have uh, languages and dialects that have no uh, translation for the name of Jesus because uh, they have not yet heard the name. And I am thankful that we've been given the opportunity to know his name and to to speak his name and to declare his name. I don't want to hold it back. I want to let the whole world know Jesus, the greatest name. Jesus, the only name. Jesus, uh, the only saving name. Jesus, the only name for our living God. Everything else is a title, but the authority is in the name. There is salvation in the name. So we understand uh, that understanding Matthew 28, 19 is essential. We understand that the name of Jesus is above every name. And then now there is salvation in the name of Jesus. Matthew 1, 21, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And then Luke 24 and 47, repentance and remission of sins uh, should be preached in his name. Neither, according to Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It is the name of Jesus. Not only is there salvation in the name of Jesus, but his name is the only name in which there is salvation. You will not find salvation in any other. It is not Jesus and others. It is Jesus alone that you will find salvation. So when we have covered that there's under that we need to understand Matthew 28 19 having that understanding is essential we've talked about the name of Jesus as being above every name we talked about and proved according to scripture that there is salvation in the name of Jesus and now let's look at the section I on, on page 14 there are many other blessings so we talked about salvation in the name now we're talking about blessings in the name Number one, there is healing in the name of Jesus. Acts 3 and 6, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Acts 3, 16, and his name, and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Number two, there is power in the name of Jesus. Luke 10 and 17 says this, even the devil's are subject unto us through thy name. And then in Mark chapter 16 and verse 17, in my name shall they cast out devils. And so not only is there salvation in the name, but there is also a greater blessing in the name. Healing and power and then blessing in the name. According to Malachi 3.16, there is a book of remembrance written and through it upon his name. And then number four, there is protection in the name of Jesus. Uh, Proverbs 18 and 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Number five, prayers are answered in the name of Jesus. John 14, 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So there is salvation in the name but there are also many blessings in the name. And we spoke of just five of them, but there are many, many more. Healing, power, blessing, protection, and prayers. All, that word blessing in number three could be substituted with the word provision. If you want a different word that would distinguish it from the blessing of the name section, there is provision in the name of Jesus. And so we know there's healing power, uh, provision, protection, and prayer in, in, of healing in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And number six, on page 15, as we're getting toward the close of our lesson today, water baptism in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Acts chapter number two and verse number 38, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That is Acts 
2.38. So we know that there is not only salvation in the name, but there are blessings in the name. And then the Holy Ghost is given in Jesus' name. How can we question the importance of the name of Jesus when we study the scriptures? There are those who might who would make light of this important truth and declare that Jesus was no more than any other name. It is evident that they are still in darkness. As far as this glorious revelation is concerned, they have not yet seen it because to them that are lost, this revelation is hid. There is no name that we can breathe in prayer or sing in praise that can bring the blessing and power like the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we know that the titles, understanding the difference between titles and name, is essential to our understanding of doctrine. I'm very thankful that the Lord has revealed himself in many titles, love, healer, deliverer, all of those great titles. But I'm also thankful today that he did not leave us in the dark concerning his name, but all of the things pointed toward the moment that his name would be revealed. And now that his name has been revealed to us, let us declare that name. I don't want to take the revealed name and keep it to myself. I want to take the name of Jesus and declare it to the whole world. Jesus, the name above all names. Jesus, the name of deity. Jesus, the name that's greater than fear, greater than worry, greater than pain, and greater than schoolwork. Oh, okay, I just threw that in, but it's true. Jesus is greater. I love each and every one of you. So thankful that we have the revelation of the name. I had someone tell me years ago, when you don't know what to preach, preach Jesus, because Jesus always works. God bless you. I look forward to being back in class with you guys next week. We are going to have a great time. We're going to jump into Bible Doctrine 3, lesson number 3, and we're going to talk about salvation, and we're going to lay the biblical foundation for salvation. This lesson is going to be really great, and you guys can use this lesson as a Bible study, and it'll do great things for you, and it'll help you as you begin to put things together for your own teaching and preaching. God bless you. If you have any questions, always feel free to contact me, and I look forward to answering any questions and spending time together in our next class. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.